from New York City, it's The Cube, covering Welcome to the New Edge. Brought to you by Pensando Systems. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We are on top of Goldman Sachs in downtown Manhattan. It was a really beautiful day a couple of hours ago, but the, uh, the rain is moving in, but it's appropriate because we're talking about cloud and we're here for a very special event. It's the Pens Pensando launch. I'll get the pronunciation right, the Pensando launch. And it's really about welcome to the new edge. And to start off, I mean, I couldn't come up with two better tech executives who've been around the block, seen it all. And they're both here for this launch event, which is pretty special. On my left, Antonio Neri, a CEO and president of HP. Antonio, great to see you. Thanks for having me. And John Chambers, of course, we know him from his many years at Cisco, but now he's the chairman of Pensando, and of course, J2 Ventures, and an author. And John, you're keeping yourself busy. I am, trying to change the world one more time. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about that change in the world, because these are two very high powerful people, you run big companies, and you talked about in your opening remarks, the next wave. You talked about these kind of 10 year waves, and we're starting a new one, which is why you got involved. Why did you see that coming? What do you see in, Pinsan in Pensando, and how are we going to address this uh, opportunity? Well, when you think about it, uh, every 10 years there's a new leader in the marketplace, and nobody has stayed on top longer than 10 years and has led in the next market transition. Uh, you, we think about it in mainframes, uh, IBM clearly the leader there, then many computers, I'm biased toward Wang, but DEC was there. Uh, then the uh, client server, and obviously Microsoft and Intel playing a very key role, followed by the internet, uh, where Cisco was very, very successful. And then followed literally by that, by social media, and then and the cloud, and then what I think will be e all bigger than any of the prior ones, it's about what happens as the cloud moves to the edge. And we may end up having a different term over time, but that really is what we saw today, and how we came together with a common vision as the cloud moves to the edge. What could an ecosystem of partners do with a foundation with Pensano at the core of that to really take advantage from uh, how do you deliver services to our joint customers in a way that no one else can and have the courage really to both challenge Amazon in terms of their market dominance but provide choice and say it's a multi-cloud world. How do you provide that choice and then how do you differentiate it together with each partner? Right. And Antonio, you guys have been talking about Edge for a long, long time. You've, yes. been, you've been on this for a while. Um, HP is such a great company. It used to be, I think, one of the great validators. If anyone could could do a deal with HP, it was really a technology validation and a business validation. I think that still holds true. So you must have, you know, knocking on your door all day long. What did you see in this opportunity with uh, Pensando? Well, first of all, John and I see the world from the same lens. We we see a world where the enterprise of the future will be edge centric, cloud enabled, and data driven. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have to remove these barriers, call it the cloud in one place or the other one. We are going to live what I call in an edge to cloud world where cloud is a cloudless, where the cloud experience is distributed everywhere. And wh where action happens is where we live and work. Right now, right here, we're having a conversation, we are producing data, and we are transmitting this real time. So the point is, we believe the edge is a new frontier. And that's where the vast majority of the data has been created, 75% of the data created at the edge. And this is where it starts by having a common vision and ultimately a, a same DNA, same culture. John and I share the same values for passion for customer, passion for driving a customer-driven innovation and ultimately change the world like we have done for decades. And I think Hewlett Packard Enterprise is uniquely positioned to be the edge to cloud platform deliver as a service and together with Pensando and the great technology they bring both on the silicon side and on the software side, together with our own know-how and engineering capabilities, we can change that world again. And you, you know, the fun part is we can almost finish each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little bit different <laughs> accent. Uh, but it's the ability to have a common vision, having never really talked about yeah. it. And then a view of the common culture, because strategic partnerships are really hard. Yeah, right. And you said it on stage, but I could not agree with it more. If your cultures aren't similar, if you don't think how does your partner win first and how do you win second, this is very hard to do. And we, we can finish each other's sentences. And I think there is another point here that John and I truly believe, because it's part of our values, is to use technology for good. So yes. one thing is, accelerating the business innovation and what our enterprise customers are going through, but then how apply that technology to deliver some good. And we as a company have a clear purpose in life, which is to advance the way people live and work. So I think as we go through this massive inflection point, both on the business side and on the technology side, not only we can create a better world, but also give back some to the communities as well. 
there are massive changes, and it's a sea change in, in infrastructure and the way things are done, but you hit on three really key simple uh, words in, in your remarks earlier. Trust, um, engineering driven, right, which is HP's culture from, from the earliest garage days, and customer centric. Um, so, you know, we hear about data driven, but, but in, in engineering, mm, you don't necessarily want to lead with that, customer centric, you do have to leave, and it's pretty interesting at Pensando, you talk to all these customers, you're just launching the company today, you've been in stealth for over two years, but all these customers have been engaged with you since the very, very beginning. Yes. Pretty interesting approach. It is, and we do share a common passion on that. Every company says they're customer driven, but just ask how the CEO spends his or her time. Uh, just ask their customers, do they replace them first on every issue? Uh, we share that common value completely. Right. Yeah, by the way, I spend 50% of my time on the road talking to customers. That's my role because I believe the truth is in the cold face. When you talk to customers, you get the truth, what the challenges and opportunities are. And we need to bring that succinct feedback back into our product management engineering team to try to solve those problems or take advantage of those opportunities by delivering a better experience. You start with the experience first and technology comes second. Right. Mm -hmm. The other piece you talked about is your team and, and diversity and really the power right. of diversity. And, and I think it was, uh, the Lincoln uh, cabinet, right, band of, of people that didn't get along with each other and, and had a bunch of different points of view, but because of that, it surfaces issues and it, it lets you see multi sides. Right. You said you handpicked that team. You know, what were some of the things you thought about when you handpicked your team when you took the reins a couple of years ago? From well, May? it starts by, uh, you know, thought leadership and what how they see the world, ultimately what the strengths are and how we bring those strengths for the power of one. You know, we I agree with John, you know, I believe a team comes first, the individual comes second. And if you can bring the best of each individual in a concerted way, where you create an environment for debate and ultimately for getting alignment and moving forward with execution, that's what the, is, is all about leadership. So I handpicked those people because each of them had a unique quality, whether it's you know, being very self-centric in the way you deliver the value proposition or very technology-centric or very you know, um, services-oriented. So we, we have picked those people for a reason and uh, and it's, it's not easy to manage a very opinionated <laughs> team <laughs> but once you can get them aligned it's actually incredible fun to right. watch you know i would make one tweak to what you just asked the question on uh, i had a chance to watch his team for the first time uh, in our garage startup mm -hmm. at my house and uh, they are very diverse with different opinions they are very comfortable disagreeing with each other but they have a common set of values and a common end goal. I'm not sure the Lincoln cabinet had that. <laughs> and that's so important to realize because what, what we're about to do together and what each of us are trying to do in our own endeavors is so important to have a team that has that type of culture and the ability to move for that. Right. The other team that mentioned that kept coming up throughout the day was the team that, that you're working with on Pensando and how this team has been together for, I think you said the new 20, right? 25 plus years yes. and have built multiple projects, multiple products over many, many years mm -hmm. and now have this cohesion, as you keep saying, they can, they can finish their own sentences. Yeah. You know, a really, uh, really specific approach to get this group together that you know it's not going to be strategy, it's going to be delivery. It is going to be the combination, if I may. Uh, and it is very unique that a team works together for over 25 years. Yeah. Uh, it's a team that is a family, and we are about as diverse as it gets in our, our backgrounds, our accents, uh, uh, our countries that our families came from. Uh, but it's a team that competes purely on getting market transitions right that is always driven by our customers and what we need to do and build and put them always first in everything we do. And then it's fearless. We outline audacious goals of being number one in everything we do. And out of the eight products that we built together, uh, we are number one in all eight, all of them with over 50% market share, and there was no number two. And so the ability to execute with that type of uh, precision, uh, customer driven and the courage to do it and understand what we know and we don't know. Coming together one more time, I mean, it's really exciting. It will be a new definition of 20-somethings in a startup. Right. So I'll give you the last word, Antonio, as, as you looked at John's chart with those 10-year those ten year blocks in, in the garage has been around uh, Palo Alto for a long time. So 82 you guys years. have seen a lot, 82 <laughs> years. You've been through a few of these and you're still here and, and still doing a great job and still winning. So as you look at that pr from your current position as CEO, you know, kind of what goes through your head? How are you making sure you're, you're keeping ahead? How are you avoiding you know, the Clayton Christensen innovators dilemma to, right. to make sure you're killing your own business before somebody else kills you know, kind of the old stuff and making sure you're out in front? 
When I became a CEO uh, in the transition from Meg to me, I established three key priorities for myself. One is uh, uh, our customers and partners. Keep them at the center of everything we do. That's one of our core values. Uh, second is innovation, innovation, innovation. Innovation from a customer-driven approach. And third is the culture of the company. And what a great example here with John, you know, leading an iconic company for decades. And so to me, I have been working very aggressively on the three of those uh, aspects, and I'm very pleased with the progress we have made. But now it's about writing the next chapter of this company. And in order to write that next chapter of the company, you need to have a strong alignment at the top, all the way down, what I call ropes to the ground. So fun enough, John is going to be in my event here uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll bring the leadership team, the top 400 leaders, talking about how you disrupt yourself and how you pivot the company into the future. And the future, as I said, is we see an enterprise that's edge-centric, cloud-enabled, and data-driven, delivered as a service. So we are going to be the as-a-service company with an edge-to-cloud platform that accelerates business outcomes from the data. And the combination of Pensando technologies and engineering capabilities with our vision and our own uh, intellectual property, we think we can deliver those unique experiences for the customers in a more agile, cost-effective way and democratize the cloud, as John say, for the, for the world. So I'm incredibly excited about doing this. Um, and who thought that John Chambers and, and Antonio Neri would be here, you know? <laughs> uh, and the reality is it takes leadership. So I value leadership, I value trust, and this partnership is built on trust. And we both have the same values. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I mean, we're going to talk about the products a little bit later. We've got yeah. some of the deeper product people, but uh, you know, I think the leadership thing is so important. I think it's harder. I think it's 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 hard to be a great leader. It's hard to lead through trans transitions, and and the pace of change is only accelerating. So the challenge is is only going to increase. But I think communication and trust is such a big piece. I saw Dave Patrick speak many many times, and yes. he's very very good. And I asked him because we had a thing at, at school. I said, Dave, why are you so good? And he said, very simple, as a CEO, my job is to communicate. I have three constituents. I have my customers, I have the street, and I have uh, my employees. Um, and so I treat it as a skill. I practice. I got a coach. And, and I treat it like any other skill. And, and it's so hard and so important to provide that leadership, provide that direction so everybody can pull the rope in the same direction. So uh, nothing but the best of both of you, and thanks for taking a few minutes. Thank, Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Thank All right. You. Antonio, All right. it's a pleasure. Thank you. He's Antonio. He's John. I'm Jeff. You're watching The Cube from the top of Goldman Sachs in Manhattan. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.